Happy August to everybody, and uh, of course, mostly to the ladies, as it is Women's Month. Um, this is the first show of the month in a month where finally football will be cracking again at the weekend. But um, it's early on in the week, and so we're going to discuss some of the teams who might have some problems getting into that biologically safe environment. Helping me to kind of speak to the news of the day are John T. Mark, uh, I've got Mazola Mulepe, and Veli Lemnyandu joining us. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Let's start with, um, obviously, the biologically safe environment um, is set to be up and running come the end of this week when players and sundry will be heading into them. But there's murmurs, and we've spoken about it here, that a certain club who were also kind of pushing for the season to be null and void and are sitting at the bottom of um, the Glad Africa Championship, I don't know if all these things maybe contributed to them wanting not to see out the rest of the season. But yeah, Royal Eagles... There is this talk that they might not have the means to go into the BSC and afford to stay in the BSC for these few weeks as we look to get uh, football done and dusted, John T. Um, like I say, bottom of the table, it would not be in their best interests because obviously playing it through will most likely see them relegated. Um, but here we are. They might now be in jeopardy of actually just getting into the BSC. Yeah, I think you know, we did have this story um, about a week ago and um, certainly they seem to be struggling financially on some level to get their act together in terms of paying for everything that needed to be paid for to go into the BSC. Obviously, uh, Dr. Ivan Korsa uh, was quite clear when he said um, that the teams must pay their way. Um, they've had their grants for uh, four or five months without having to do anything effectively, without playing, without having to travel. So where the Royal Eagles money has gone in that sense, I don't know. Um, I know that the management of the club have come out since and said um, there's no truth in that, that they do, um, that they are able to play. So maybe they will play. Um, and obviously, like you say now, uh, if they've managed to, I think they were one of the teams that wanted to, no, no, um, wanted to avoid the season. But now that the season's going ahead, it's a bit pointless. Um, they're not playing because now... What every I, I presume that if you don't play, it'll just be res, um, awarded as a victory to the other team. Your theoretical fixture, it's usually like a 3 0 to the other team, so um, they'll definitely be relegated if they don't play. So it's in their interest now actually to play and to try and um, to try and play. No, it's in, it's in their interest obviously to play, uh, so I think they will go, go and play out and pay the money and um, get on with it. Otherwise, they're just going to be in the ABC Montepe League anyway. Um, yeah. So they, We'll get on with it. Mazet, I mean, looking at their situation, it's not all too precarious. They are at the bottom of the table, but there's six games to play, 18 points on the table. The teams above them are probably only about six, seven points ahead. So you would think that now, like John T said, is the time to just kind of gather all your coins, make it happen, and hopefully be able to live fight another day in the new season. Yeah, look, uh, obviously, John T was also mentioning that the, the, the chairman of, 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 or the owner of that club denied that it was them. But we, we know for a fact that there is one team out of all the 32 clubs uh, that, that did not comply. And obviously, this was mentioned by Chairman Ivan Koza, although he did not say which team it is. And I think all of us by now have heard uh, that it's 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 Royal e uh, Royal Eagles mm -hmm. um, and look their situation at the moment I think it, it's a no brainer that they would have been one of the teams uh, asking that the league be declared null and void because I mean if if you think about it it makes sense if the league declared null and void no one gets relegated no one wins promotion that means they are secured their 500k for next season. Whereas if you go down to the ABC Mutsipe League, you might never come back up. <laughs> Once you go down in the trenches there, to come back up is, is, is tough. And I suppose, it, it, you know, mathematically speaking, they possibly could have uh, overturned it, you know, with the remaining games or whatever. You never know. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the cost, you know, because, um, you know, several chairmen uh, have since confirmed, including Farouk Kadodia, and others have since confirmed that it, it's at 850 a test if clubs are paying out of their own pockets. You, you, spend, you find yourself spending between 40 and 50K uh, every time you do a test. And obviously the first, the first round of tests, they were done with the assumption that the season would resume in about two weeks or so 
Mm. But they, but then it was another three weeks, you know. So so you've had five weeks, and I assume you cut you could you know clubs who can afford it could possibly have maybe tested twice or three times in the five weeks. Those who possibly who can't afford it maybe once, and that's that's not enough. But I think the league will then make sure that all the teams test again just before they go into the into the BSE. And as Chairman Ivan Koza said, if you if you don't have a negative test you are out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Belile, in terms of going into that buyer bubble, we've seen some other club managers or club owners kind of saying, that, listen, I'm going to take 50 people, including my reserve league players, just in case of injuries or in case of any players testing positive. And his rationale was that they'd rather spend the money now than not have enough playing personnel and then end up losing matches. You know, that kind of then brings into focus the, the stark nature of the haves and the have-nots. But are Real Kings, you know, in a situation, Royal Eagles rather, so, sorry, in a situation of their own making? Look, um, the issue of um, Royal Eagles is, is, and, and financial challenges, it's not something that just started now, mm-hmm. you know? Um, even their former CEO has just left them. Um, Morgan Mamayla to go there to Chiba United. Mm-hmm. And and they've been having these issues. Um, at some stage, even players, I think they did even threaten to boycott, you know? Um, so this, this now, what is happening, um, is just, in fact, it's also one of the reasons the team is there at the bottom. And, and you will recall what, ha- what happened. Uh, there was that split um, between the club owners um, at the, in the end of last season, um, owing to some family issues um, within the ownership. Uh, of that club. So this is not something new. It's just that now um, the issue of um, a football resumption, um, lockdown and um, football stopping uh, has added to the problems that the club um, has had. Mm. And, 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 and look, um, yes, uh, I know that the clubs always pay for the accommodation, um, but sometimes maybe you'll find that um, they will just accommodate uh, themselves um, just when they go to play away. And uh, you, you find that they don't even camp some teams before they even go yeah. um, and, 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 and play. But now they are both there to accommodate themselves uh, for the whole month, uh, for the whole duration of, um, of August and, until they complete the fixtures. Right. So this is where it becomes tricky um, for some of the teams. For instance, um, at Savcha, we've just had an interview with Dylan Kerr, mm. and he was talking about um, going to test again uh, tomorrow and get their results on uh, on Wednesday. And you know that um, they are going into the bio battle um, on on Thursday. So this is where um, it, it becomes a very interesting um, uh, uh, this this situation um, of Royal Eagles. But I think here um, we must also make it known that their problems didn't just start now with the lockdown and, yeah. and the situation that we have now. They've had problems um, almost throughout the, the whole season. Right. And, and this is the reason that they are sitting at the bottom. But if they don't comply, they are not going to the power bubble and they will forfeit all the measures uh, because it's there even in the document mm. uh, which uh, PSL has prepared that if you don't go into the bar bubble, um, and, and this, this is going to be the situation, and they could forfeit measures if, if, if they don't go in there. Because maybe I would say also, it doesn't matter maybe how many tests they've had, mm-hmm. uh, because I've had some teams in, in the Great Africa, they've not been doing some tests. So if they've not been doing some tests, but before they go in, mm-hmm. their yeah. results yeah. must reflect that this test was done two days before. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I mean, to be fair, I think the, 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 the league are trying to be quite helpful, Mazola, in the fact that now you have these ex gratia payments that were brought forward. Uh, it's about three million for the elite clubs and then about a million for the lower division clubs. You know, in a way, just kind of removing all obstacles to say you can't return to play. They've kind of said, here's some money, come through, um, use it to be ready to get into the BSE. We don't want to have any stories after. 
Yeah, look, I mean, the, the league had been clear about that from the beginning. Even, even when, the, when the date was the 18th of July, the, you know, I, I, I was able to get my hands on, on a document that uh, explained the cost uh, and you know, the, the maximum capacity of people that can go into the buyer bubble. And the league was always clear that if, you, if, if member clubs cannot pay, it will be deducted. It will, it, will, it will be paid on your behalf, but de- deducted from your grant whenever that arrangement can can be made. So 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 as to remove any obstacles, as as you correctly put it. And look, also I know of some teams that, for instance, instead of the maximum fifty, they they are they are only taking half of that um, uh, number, or or twenty nine or whatever. And in that sense, that shows that you you possibly then are, are spending less. You can manage your cost if you feel, especially maybe clubs that feel they don't have much to play for. Yeah. You know, they they are just getting their players to to give to be back in action, and almost for them it's some sort of preseason uh, for the upcoming campaign. Mm. So they're just going into the bubble, <clears throat> and you just bring um, just enough personnel to get the job done. Uh, but obviously, those who can't take chances in terms of relegation and yeah. promotion. Yeah. Then those guys, perhaps they're looking at maximum capacity to have even MDC players in the team. But obviously, the more you bring in, the more it's going to cost you. And I would think most led Africa Championship sides, with the except, exception maybe of IX Cape Town and maybe Utongati and Moroka Swallows, may may very well uh, take only half mm. of, of 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 the personnel that is uh, uh, required so that they can, uh, you know, uh, be able to to manage the costs. But you know, having said that, the league, the league definitely has removed all obstacles. Yes, Lee, yes, it's you go into the new season owing the league money, which at some point will be taken from your grant. But you know, um, you know, I, I think it's 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 the it's the best way so that all clubs can at least be given the opportunity. You never know what could happen. You know, in in, in a few months' time, you could be able to then recuperate some of of that money through other means. Um, yeah, you never know. This thing is also, it's, it's a moving target, so we'll see. But the, the, the league takes responsibility for now, yeah. but not entirely, obviously. Yeah. And I think also there's a, I think the story in the city press that I read yesterday mentioned that the Houting government put forward 10, 10 million yeah. Yeah, to, be sure. able to, uh, <clears throat> to be able to, 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 to help because they are the ones who pitched the, the, the whole thing of hosting the bio bubble. And I would assume if you are pitching to host it, yeah. then you are going to contribute some money, hotels, buses, and stuff sure. like that. Yeah. No, yeah, 10 million yeah. sound like a good place think, to start. Yeah, I think the other uh, challenge there is that most of the time, um, when it comes to uh, hotel, uh, when it comes to accommodation, mm. um, most of the time, the players, uh, they share, they share yeah. the room. Yeah. So yeah. now... Uh, they have to book single rooms, mm-hmm. and these are single rooms, single rooms for a whole month. Sure, you know, sure. so this is where it becomes uh, tricky for some clubs, especially from um, the, the lower division. Because, um, sometimes you find that when they book accommodation, also um, going where they're going to play, they always look for cheapest accommodation, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or most affordable um, accommodation. But now things are different. Uh, these are the hotels that they have to keep up, and the rates are all the same. Mm. Uh, but you know that the pockets are not deeper in the same way. You oh, know? Sure. So, sure. so, yeah, so uh, this, this is the challenge. But look, uh, it's a challenge that most of them should also welcome, um, you know, because we've all been calling for football to return. And, uh, you know, you might not like something, but uh, in an organizational, in terms of organizational discipline, uh, where the majority has ruled, um, you go with it. Hmm. Sounds like Safcha things there. Sounds uh, like that's the, the, the law of the land being uh, spoken there. Have we seen any opt-outs, guys? I know overseas in some sports like the NBA and MLB and NFL, you've seen players kind of say, nope. 
Um, I'm going to sit this one out for the remainder of the campaign <clears throat> season. Have we seen anyone kind of come out of that citing either personal reasons or health reasons for not um, wanting to participate in what's left of the campaign? Or can we expect everybody to kind of be back except for, like you said, in, in instances where teams don't have much to play for? I haven't seen an, anyone pull out. Um, the other gentleman may know better than me, but I haven't seen um, anyone sure, say yeah. that they don't want to play. Mm. Uh, I know that in the EPL you had, uh, I think, Kante at Chelsea giving some special dispensation to take a bit of extra time off. Um, I think most of the guys who took time initially, they ended up coming back and playing, like Troy Deeney and Kante in, in England. So. I think you'll find that you know, everybody, and I haven't seen anyone uh, personally who's, who's uh, said, no, they don't want to play, they're too scared. And I don't know. I guess it would be up to the club then to say, well, you're breaching your contract or, or not, or just give them dispensation to, to take time off. But that would be between, contractually between the club and the player, but I haven't seen anything like that. I mean, obviously you've had things like, because the season is ending, <clears throat> Later than ever, you've you've got situations where someone like George Malaleka can't play for the rest of the season because he's yeah. now a Mamelodi Sundowns player. I haven't seen an incident where a player has voluntarily, because of the pandemic, said, "I don't, I'm too scared, I don't want to play." I think there was a a situation where uh, it wasn't sort of official, but <clears throat> Vuyo Mere Vuyo Mere went on 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 his Instagram account, sort of complaining about the return of football and kind of a similar statement to what Danny Rose made in the, in the EPL mm. thing about lab rats and whatever. He, he didn't use those exact words, but he kind of suggested that um, the PSL is risking with their lives by letting them go play. And th this was obviously early days of um, the, you know, speculation about when football would return. Right. And he, you know, and he went quiet after that. I, I, I would think, you know, <laughs> I heard that uh, he got into hot water uh, because of, of those statements he had made on social media. And he, he went quiet after that. And I, I don't think there's been anything since. I would assume the club then obviously had a, wor had a word with him. And I, I don't know if he, ever, he actually even removed the, 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 the Twitter post. I never checked. But, I mean, it, it, it was too late because... <laughs> You know, some publications had already been running with the story about it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, I mean, I guess in that situation, um, now people are seeing that there's been a, a good plan that's been put in place. But what about the higher ups at certain clubs, Velile? There's uh, footage circulating of uh, Bobby Mutaung. Um, what? Could have possibly, I think one set of the footage could have kind of possibly, you could have thought, oh, maybe it's old or whatever. But the moment you saw a mask, you were like, that has to be during COVID times. Um, have we heard anything from Kaiser Chiefs? Have we heard anything from Bobby? Um, what kind of example does, does this set when one of the, the administrators, top administrators at a top club is in contravention of the law uh, and is quoted to joining a, a biologically safe environment? with such behavior? Yeah, well, you know, um, I think when those videos started coming out and um, we were all receiving it, um, especially via WhatsApp, um, and then they were put out on, on Facebook, on Twitter, um, the people who were panicking the most were also coming from the league, you know, um, because um, we're not just talking about any official here. Yeah. We're talking about a senior club official, uh, arguably the biggest uh, football team uh, in the country. And for government to have even allowed uh, football not only to come back and train, uh, but to come back and play, you know, mm -hmm. um, long before we even hit uh, level one. Um, I'm sure maybe at some stage the league was panicking around, around this because it's not attracting. Um, it's not it's not painting a good image um, for football, especially um, even if he's not going to uh, to go to the bio bubble. Uh, because I understand he might not be going to the bio bubble, but even if he's not going to the bio bubble, what about the interaction? Maybe that he's got um, with the with the technical team and possibly mm -hmm. the players as well. Because um, in his role, he's someone who's very close um, to the team because. Is heading the football department, sure. um, so to 
to see uh, those kind of visuals, um, even though at this stage we might not know um, when um, were they taken. But uh, as, we, as, 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 as you can see, uh, it's something that has happened now. Mm. Um, during the lockdown, uh, as you said, uh, we can see through the issue of the mask. Um, that, that that's there. So I think what is disappointing uh, at this stage is not uh, to have a seen a statement, uh, maybe uh, coming from the club to condemn uh, this situation because uh, I think as uh, BBK put it out or even on his column yesterday, um, this, this is something that needs to be condemned um, because People will also point out and say, remember what the uh, president did um, when a minister um, had been seen to be visiting uh, mm. the friends uh, at a time when uh, I think we were on level four then, uh, that was not allowed. Sure. Uh, a whole minister was suspended for two months, you know? Um, so I think um, it's, it's, it's something that the football leadership uh, should really Look, you see, at a time, especially uh, this allegation, in fact, this, this, this video mm. also comes at a time when uh, there have also been unproven allegations uh, of some football, football players uh, who are also having their own parties. That's, that that uh, was going to be my next thing, is that, like, obviously, if, you know, it's kind of, you know, fish rots from the head type of thing, that there's probably not the only pocket of this kind of disregard for the current rules and regulations yeah 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 so so and you know when you see a leader and he's leading players and players are supposed to be um you know taking the cue from him yeah. learning from him yeah so so that's that's where for me it becomes uh, a bit tricky and uh, it's, it's not a point pointing uh, or painting a good image um, uh, for the club because we know that this is a club that is always upfront with releasing statements, mm. but uh, it, it has taken them uh, this long now um, to respond to something like this, unless maybe there are still some internal um, processes uh, that they are going through because um, you cannot tell me that they have not been receiving any media inquiries until now um, along this issue. Unfortunately, I'm not really re reporting, so I don't really know. I don't follow stories. Yeah. But I mean, uh, gents, John T. Mazzola, do you think, are you going to hold your breath for a statement? I, what about? I can say is our attempts to get hold of Bobby and Vina from Chiefs today were unsuccessful. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, I do, uh, uh, you know, it's not, it doesn't send out a good message. Um, I would say that, you know, if, uh, if you think that these young men between sort of what 20 and 30 who've been stuck at home for four and a half months having haven't been having the odd party then i don't know where where you come from <laughs> you've been living under a rock because you know that's what's going to happen if you're you know cabin fever and i bet there have been parties and there's probably been alcohol and there's been like you know there's been drinking and and, and probably a little bit of this and that and that the deputy sports minister was asked about um Bobby today, and then she came out and said, or he came out and said, sorry, um, that basically it's a matter for law enforcement. That you know, it's not really got anything to do with the sports ministry. That you know, if they've broken the law, then it needs a case needs to be opened, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because you know, drinking alcohol at home is obviously not against the law, but having a social gathering is right now. Um, so that will be um, something for 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 the police, I guess. Um, but yeah, it doesn't paint, as Valile mentioned, it doesn't paint a good, um, a good picture for, um, for Chiefs. And certainly you'd expect the club to sort of at least make some sort of statement by now about, about that behaviour. Because it's not, it's not, it doesn't set a good example, um, certainly not to the players at Chiefs. And, and, and obviously, um, yeah, uh, if he's not going into the bio bubble, I didn't know that then. I guess, you know, that would be a problem. I mean, the other thing about the bio bubble is, you get tested. The idea is it's it's secure, so you get yeah. tested forty eight hours before. Um, if you have coronavirus, you simply won't be allowed into the bubble, um, and if you don't, then you will. Um, so it's supposed to be uh, 
to quote Dr. Tulani and Gwen, you're 99% secure. Um, so either way, whether you've been partying or not, uh, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't 100% matter as long as you're COVID-19 free when you go in the bubble um, with, in the sense of, of, of the spread of the virus, but it doesn't set a very good example. I agree with that. Yeah, there we yeah. go. And uh, yeah. so if you test positive, especially with these latest tests, um, say a player from, or an official from Barroca, when they do the test tomorrow, uh, test positive, um, they are going to go uh, to the bubble, but they are going to be on the other wing, uh, not on the wing of, of those who have tested negative. Uh, because there's an area that they've prepared uh, for those who are going to, to quarantine. Yeah. So once you've recovered and uh, you'll be tested again and then you test negative, then you'll go and join your team. So, but the challenge uh, for those who like but <laughs> the challenge is that once you move out of the bar bubble, you can't come back. Even if you go to a garage um, opposite the street of the hotel to, to buy some toothpaste, you can't go back. Right. Uh, remember uh, the story of, I think, of a, a, a coach in Germany yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, who went to, to buy some toothpaste. So you want to be no. So can't, can't just uh, think you yeah, like Kunin, can't just do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So hey, if you turn this into some land, uh, nice things, John. If you like nice things, ah <laughs> make sure you pack them in your bags and you put yeah, them. No, in. With Dylan Kerr now is saying to us that the players um aren't allowed they're allowed to go to training and they're allowed to go to matches, otherwise they're not allowed to leave the hotel. So in theory they if security is right, they can't go anywhere. There can be none of this partying. <laughs> Um, or anything like that. I guess it's about controlling, also controlling people coming into the hotel. You, you have to stop um, anybody, any friends and family from coming to the hotel. So you have to really contain. And security has to be, uh, you know, very tight. But, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting one because you do wonder how, if they'll manage to do that 100%, you, you know, you do wonder. Yeah, no, for sure, no, for sure, and it's yeah. it's interesting because we all know like that the security in a team is is usually very buddy buddy with the team players and the people in the team. So for them to enforce that, there's gonna be a, a different dynamic when you're saying to players, "Hey, can't leave this floor. You can't go anywhere." Mazola, the story that came out in the Sunday papers about uh, the Boozy Brothers, the Booze Brothers hanging out and uh, pitching up to training. Smelling of alcohol, um, <laughs> the story around Pagamani Matlambi and uh, Andy Lejali. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I want to take it with a pinch of salt, uh, as you do with the tequila, or if, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a true story. W what do you make of this one? And where did they get the look, alcohol? Look, I'll be honest, I, I, I make nothing of it simply because I, I, I haven't seen the story. Uh, I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'll be honest, that, that okay. part of the let me, tabloid... Let me, let me send you a link, and then you can okay. check it out now, and then you can give us your opinion once I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, you're trying to trick me into making a comment. I have not oh. seen the story. I can't comment. <laughs> well, I, saw, I saw the story, uh. Uh, and it's a story I've known about uh, for weeks now. Hmm. Um, I heard about it um and the two individuals uh concerned yeah um but you know um understand um back then it was said that uh, um the technical team or the management of the team chased them out um, um as they arrived in that state they arrived uh they are alleged to have arrived in yeah and, um, but I understand now, I think uh, I heard that they are back in camp. Um, so, yeah, so uh, just on that part of how legit the story is, when mm -hmm. it's, story, uh, it's something that I heard about a few weeks ago. Mm. So, I before, think before the alcohol ban. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested to find out if it was before the alcohol ban when you heard this. Yeah, it was before the second alcohol ban. 
okay. Yeah, it was before the second alcohol ban. So they they at least got the alcohol legally. Yeah, but they were still in the co- contravention of pitching up to training drunk bands. Yes, you know. Yes. Yeah, that, that, the, yeah, that one. It's time that these two have been linked to these kinds of stories, either. Is it? I mean, yeah, was, was kicked out of Bofana camp for for turning up for training allegedly not sober or smelling of booze, and then Jali couldn't get in the Sundowns team for a long time, and Pizzo certainly mentioned off the field issues that concerned him, and there were stories there. So I don't know. There's no smoke without some fire here, but and the, the fact that it's those two who have been repeatedly linked to such things, then I I I worry that that is true. But also, um, I also have sympathy for young men in lockdown. Young men will be young men, and, and they've been stuck there for a long time. And it depends how you know. It's up to the club really, and it's up to law enforcement if they find out there was a party and they want to initiate some criminal proceedings or something. But other than that. Uh, I don't know how they how you can take it much further. Uh, if the club decided those two have, uh, are fine and, and can play for them, uh, that's up to the club. Not for sure. Not for sure. At the end of the day, any decision will lie uh, with the club. And just to wrap things up, gents, I, 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 and in the spirit of this month, um, Women's Month, uh, Banyana Banyana players just making moves, man. It looks so good in terms of how many of them are, are, are being picked up by teams overseas. Um, people, you know, know some of the clubs, some of the other clubs you won't know, but even those that you don't know are then going to be in the Champions League, the Women's Champions League uh, in the new season. So the moves are to credible clubs where these players are going to get better and better. And I guess Melile just kind of fits in with the trajectory of this team and how they've just been so visible and capable more than anything to, to get results and put themselves in the shop window. I mean, we were speaking about how some players will be doing that now during the resumption of the football, but these ladies have been doing it for quite a while with all these tournaments that they've kind of been earning their place to participate in. Yeah, look, Kamza, this, um, this is something that we've been um, asking previously, especially to the technical team, you know, um, I remember even um, when we were qualifying for the Olympics, um, but the impact of qualifying for the Women's World Cup mm-hmm. and it's something that um, we hadn't done uh, for a very long time and we only went to our World Cup uh, last year in France and you can see the results, mm-hmm. you know, you can see the results uh, because now um, as much as yes, we didn't win a game there, but in terms of our showing, in terms of our playing, uh, people could see what some um, footballers can offer. Mm. And this, these are the results now um, of, of what we're seeing. In fact, uh, even if uh, some of them previously, before the World Cup, uh, we will, we will, our players would go to Lithuania, they would go to Finland, but now you see the leagues uh, where they are going. They are going to the Portuguese League, and they are going to uh, the, the Women's La Liga in Spain, mm. uh, and, and Scotland. And uh, you know, very soon uh, we also have a player in the Swedish uh, Women's League, which uh, is arguably one of the top leagues, if not the top league um, in, in, in Europe when it comes to women's football. And very soon uh, we could even be having players in the French and even in, 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 the, in the English uh, Women's League as well. So it, 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 it tells you, um, you, you see, you can, even if you move to a law, uh, just a lower league now uh, in Europe, but uh, you are guaranteed that the next step, if you look at uh, in the way of uh, Jermaine's procedure, she's moved now uh, to, she moved to Spain, um, and, and I think now she's just uh, moved to, to Portugal, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, so you, 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 you can see um, the, the, the levels, um, you know? So I think, um, firstly, we have qualifying for the Women's World Cup to thank because now we are reaping the rewards of that. And, and, and I think generally, uh, the level of our players as well um, has always been up there. You know, uh, it's just that they needed that. And this right. is something uh, the likes of uh, Niger- the Nigerian uh, Super Falcons, uh, the likes of uh, the Cameroon Lioness, and the likes of uh, the Black Queens from Ghana, mm. they've always had that. They've always have, play, have players playing in these top uh, European leagues. And also, don't forget the Chinese um, league 
which is also very strong sure. when it comes to uh, the pocket as well. Right. So I think, I think now, I, I mean, you, you, you look at someone like Roda Blaudzi, who's just um, moved now um, and to, to Belarus, uh, also with one of the players that uh, has always been my favorite player, especially playing in that right back, and she's got all the attributes uh, that you need um, in the right back position. Um, so when, when, you, when you look at um, these moves, yeah. um, you, 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 you can tell that uh, the quality of Banyana Banyana players, the quality of African women's footballers uh, is, is unquestionable, that it's, it's among the best, uh, especially on the continent. And I think when you have, I mean, uh, with our captain, she's returned to Europe now. When you have almost the entire starting lineup, yeah, uh, um, a young girl like Amanda Mkandi, you know, from the U, from the UJ, uh, she's she, she's still new in the setup. She was not even even finished uh, four years in, right. in the Spain, but she's already moved uh, to Spain. It augurs well for 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 Banyana Banyana, but most importantly for uh, women's football. On that note, Mazola, I mean, I think you know. We, we, we can't lose sight of the fact that it's been such a great story to see a coach kind of qualify with this the with a team and the players and then in essence kind of springboard them to going and playing their trade overseas or for it to come back full circle and then work with those players who were great already but have now become better playing at a higher level and can now contribute a bit more than they already do. I mean, their feats on the pitch are amazing. But now, with this ex ex experience, the next World Cup, you can go and then look to win, look to get out the group. Yeah, look, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, Coach Desre herself and, um, you know, I think Amanda Zamini in the past... Um, and, and, and some of the other players who, <clears throat> who, who had played abroad as well did mention, I think it was either in previous um, Olympic qualifications or the most recent one and, and the World Cup qualifications as well, that uh, you know, some, of, some of the players, who, especially those who are based locally, it's very difficult in the sense that, uh, you know, it, it, especially because it was before the women's league was 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 established. Yeah. So you find you find that their overseas counterparts are playing regularly. They have full time jobs. You know, if, if you want to put it like that, mm -hmm. and and for them they are always they are ever ready mm -hmm. uh, in a sense. Uh, yeah. But when they come here, uh, you find that you know their their teammates are, are not on par. Their teammates are sort of lagging behind a little bit, and I think. You know this changes this changes that, that 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 aspect completely. You find a situation where they are playing season in season out. Uh, there are no pauses. Uh, in fact, actually, they 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 are growing even better because they are they are working uh, with fully fledged clubs um, that you know have that tick all the boxes: physios, yeah. top coaches, uh, you know, yeah, top teammates. You know, so they 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 catch up to the level. And I think in the last month already. Uh, we've had, geez, I think one the the one week there were there were uh, five Banyana players in ten days that signed uh, deals abroad, and it's still it's it's still carried on after that. I mean, Tembi also is, uh, Tembi is also a hot commodity now. She moves from that country to that country to that country to that country, you know. So it can only be. I hope. I hope uh, the deals that she's signing are, are worthwhile financially, because we all know that. You know, not just women's football in South Africa, but all over all over the world, the the discrepancies in terms of uh, you know salaries and all of yeah. that. So if 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 Tembi and uh, your Jermaine's and 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 uh, Rafila Jane are making moves like that, you you would hope. And Roda as well. I mean, Roda had a fantastic season with Mamelodi Sundowns, mm. who obviously won the league before you know Safa declared it. Uh, you know, uh, ending where it was. I mean, they had gone an incredible. I think, you know, I think it was twenty-five odd games mm. uh, without 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 losing, and they were banging in goals left, right, and center. And I think, you know, that's that's part of that. And she had just also been been to the World Cup in France last year. So yeah, I think I think like Velile is saying, it can only improve. And I'm sure Desre is smiling now, mm. having done it, having done it when the majority of them had not signed that deal to qualify for the World Cup, 
True. I think now, obviously, they can't wait to be to be part of future events, Olympics, World Cup qualifiers as well with with such such a such a strong team. Yeah, well, there you go. Huh? Participate in top tournaments and uh, you might be able to improve your national team. What a crazy concept that is. Um, let's see, maybe our male team will, will, will take some heart from that. Gents, thank you so much for your time and your impressions for another bumper episode of the Front Runner Football Podcast. Um, like we said, we will focus more and more over the coming weeks on in the new cycle because uh, of Women's Month, all the cool stories that are coming out in terms of moves and transfers and development in that stage. Um, and so, yeah, Jens, thank you so much for your. <laughs> uh, who are you clapping for yourself? A sharp, baby. Sharp, Mazola. Thank you so much to all of you guys and to you too who's been tuned in either via audio or via video, whichever way you've enjoyed the show. I do indeed hope you have enjoyed it. And um, just to say that all of us here are our thoughts um, are with all the people in Zimbabwe who are suffering at this moment. Um, it's a strange time. Don't forget them. Um, yeah, just up uh, north of our border, a lot is happening that side, but we are cognizant of these things that are taking, um, and we don't operate in a vacuum. And so we must acknowledge that uh, justice for the people of Zimbabwe is the, the highest priority. On that note, from myself, Gamzambata, John T. Mark, Mazola Mulefe, and Beli Lemnyandu, we'll catch you in a couple of days, 72 hours or so for then the second edition of the Front Runner Football Podcast for the first week of August. Catch you then.